A titanic battle of biblical proportions is set to take place within the upcoming Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, involving two of the most powerful Saiyan warriors in all of history and a seemingly enough ever so growing monster. On today's video, we are going to be discussing the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie finale, the three main factors and ingredients in the movie in which are going to matter most going forward in the Dragon Ball Super franchise, and what exactly this is going to mean for the Broly character after having to examine the aftermath of the fight between Broly and said characters. Is this going to be the last time we are ever going to see Broly in Dragon Ball Super? We discuss this and so much more next. <laughs> So the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie has now premiered in Japan, and on today's video we're going to be discussing some key elements in the movie that's going to be showcased, in which to further clarify we're going to be sharing some information courtesy being provided by Ken Zyro over on Twitter, and further elaborating what's going to happen in this movie, and again I do want to give you guys a fair warning, if you guys want to avoid spoilers, if you guys don't want to find out what happens in this movie, which by now, the majority of it has been released publicly, so there is public knowledge on what's to be expected in this movie, but if you are a person that wants to stay away from spoiler territory, then simply fast forward the video by the end, or simply click off because we are going to be discussing the following on this video. We are going to be discussing Gogeta vs Broly, the influence behind Broly's power, and finally the aftermath of Dragon Ball Super Broly, and specifically what happens with Broly at the end of the film, which is going to tie into a potential return for the series, and having to save Broly for a possible possible reintroduction later on down the line. So, if you want to find out everything that happens in this movie in a full summary breakdown, then make sure you guys go on ahead and check this video out on my channel. The link to this video will be located in the comments and description box down below, so make sure you guys go on ahead and check it out and let me know what you all think. So, to specify further the influence behind Broly's power, now it was emphasized heavily in this movie that Broly in the beginning does not know how to go Super Saiyan, and that in and of itself in a nutshell does make sense considering how Broly was exiled to a remote planet somewhere far out in the distance, and thus Broly never had any knowledge as to what exactly a Super Saiyan was, the influence behind the Super Saiyan power, Broly had naturally progressed and had gotten stronger all as a means by doing it in his normal form, which is why in the beginning of this movie it is heavily emphasized that Broly is going to fight Vegeta and Goku in a suppressed state. Broly does not fight them while trying transformed necessarily in the beginning, but more or less towards the middle and ending of the film is when Broly truly begins to turn the notches up. Now with all that having to be said, in the beginning of the movie Super Saiyan Vegeta and Super Saiyan God Vegeta after he transforms further is a problem for someone like Broly considering how Vegeta is putting the beats on Broly early on, but the influence behind Broly's power comes from deep within, and unlike any other character we've seen previously, Broly is able to gain tremendous amounts of Zenkai boost after the battle, but the only difference between Broly and everyone we've seen before is Broly is actually growing as he's fighting. So not only is Broly beginning to adapt further, but his power is also beginning to increase during the course of battle, which means even if physical punishment is inflicted on his body, it seems as if Broly is registering this somewhat like a savage in bouncing back from having to take punishment and being able to adapt and learn further as his power continues to grow which is why it is heavily implied in this movie that Broly is showing no signs of stopping, and that includes during the course of battle. Now what further solidifies Broly's transformation is the death of Paragus. Now a lot of people were wondering how exactly Paragus will die, and in fact were prognosticating on Paragus dying to begin with. Paragus does die, but he does not die by the hands of Broly. It is in fact Frieza who kills Paragus to trigger Broly into further tapping into his power, which I think is a genius idea. Having Broly kill Paragus in this situation, given this new Broly, doesn't make any sense. Why would Broly, considering that he was exiled and alone for over 40 years, all of a sudden turn on the only person that was ever there for him and simply having to kill him out of sheer mindless brutality? That in and of itself would not make any sense. In the previous Broly movies, it made sense, because Broly was hailed as an uncontrollable beast 
We knew that then he was portrayed much differently than how he is here. Back in the day, he was a mindless, ruthless monster with no motivation other than killing Goku. Here, we have an emotionally destroyed character who does not seem to articulate very well within his own language, but also doesn't seem to understand the full extent of his own heritage as he can't even transform into a simple Super Saiyan. So Broly in this movie is being painted out as a victim. A victim by chance, a victim by destiny. And here we understand that once Frieza kills Paragus, it triggers Broly into unlocking this power and which further causes Broly in his Super Saiyan form to completely decimate Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, to the point where they are basically rendered immobile and incapacitated as the fight continues and reaches its finale. So Broly even prior to transforming into his full powered state completely thrashes Super Saiyan Blue, and if you had to get my opinion for that, I disagree with that concept because Goku and Vegeta, when looking at all of their training, when looking at them having to fight Majin, androids, assassins, pride troopers, gods, deities, they have went through so much experience in having to grow together in not only fighting together but also fighting against each other that I really don't agree with the idea that some guy that was stranded on a remote planet can be equal to that kind of caliber training especially after everything they went through. Now granted we can take Android 17 as an example because he was able to become somewhat of a Super Saiyan Blue competitor or a Super Saiyan Blue like fighter after having to spend years protecting protecting the rainforest and animals, that in and of itself does seem wacky and Dragon Ball is taking a different approach and having to suit those narratives, however once Broly taps into his Super Saiyan powers, it's all over from there. And of course with Broly having to turn on Frieza, the only reason why he is turning on Frieza essentially is because of what Frieza had done to his father. But then as we go forward, we introduce the concept of Gogeta. Now in my previous video I have stated that we are going to see various different transformations of Gogeta in this movie. The indefinite transformations that we will be seeing are Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan Blue, alongside Base. So yes, Base Gogeta, Super Saiyan Gogeta, and Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. There is no official 100% confirmation that we are going to see Super Saiyan God Gogeta, but if we do, that in and of itself would be a spectacle because we've never seen Super Saiyan God Vegito, so just imagine as a substitute we end up getting Super Saiyan God Gogeta. But even while this happens, seemingly enough Broly taps into his full power during the course of fighting Gogeta. Now Gogeta is said in this movie to be very, very ruthless, keeping the same mindset and character that we saw in Fusion Reborn. So no, Gogeta is by no means going to toy around with Broly, he's not going to take him lightly. This is going to be a 100% serious Gogeta that we've seen from Fusion Reborn and bringing the firepower to Broly and having to beat him down into the ground. Which is exactly what happens because the way the spoilers and information was depicted, it seems as if Gogeta is going to decimate Broly on the battlefield. It's not even close, but Broly is still able to fight back. As much firepower as Gogeta brings, Broly is going to retaliate in trying to attempt to fight back. So props to Broly on that one. It's not going to be a one-sided fight, which I'm personally excited for because if you guys go back and watching the Dragon Ball Z movies, mostly every single boss fight or every single final fight involving a villain and a hero, particularly Goku, it always resulted or ended up with the hero having to completely decimate the villain easily without there being a struggle. Here, potentially aside from Frieza, we are witnessing an actual villain come back from certain death. Because accordingly enough, based on the spoilers that we've gotten, it looks like Broly is in fact about to die or nearing the edge of death because Gogeta beats Broly around so bad that Broly cannot sustain himself. Now whether or not he's edging death or whether or not he loses his powers is completely unknown at this very current point in time, but the fact that Broly is still able to fight back against Gogeta is something that needs to be looked at as praise because the only other person or entity that we saw fighting back against a fusion was Merge Zamasu, and that was mainly due to not only his power, but immortality as well. And it's safe to say that if the fight continued, 
Vegito would have completely dominated over Zamasu and possibly even killed him off as the fight progressed. Here, we don't have that problem. Gogeta is not going to have any sort of retcon timer behind him, nor is the fight going to be short. So Gogeta has the entire length span of however long he has against Broly, who's getting stronger, but seemingly enough losing in this fight against Gogeta. So Gogeta in base and Gogeta in his Super Saiyan forms, I think, are not going to do as much to Broly as Super Saiyan Blue would, which makes sense considering the fact that if Gogeta turns it up from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan Blue, there is a drastic difference in the upgrade. So with that being said, the aftermath of Dragon Ball is said to be that Broly is going to survive, which a lot of us were expecting and knew about for about a few weeks now. So Broly does survive, but not by chance, but because of Shile having to wish for Broly to survive and be saved. Now by the end of the movie, we come to the understanding that Broly ends up back on planet Bampa, presumably having to hunt and scavenge for food. So basically going back to his planet three days after the initial fight, Fight, Goku goes out to visit him, and Goku having to extend his hand further offers Broly help. He offers him some capsules which have food, shelter, and of course resources for Broly to use while on this planet. So while Goku is extending his hand in friendship, it looks like there is going to be a mutual connection or a mutual understanding by the end of this movie, and inherently Broly is not an evil character in this version of Dragon Ball, but more or less someone who's completely misunderstood someone who's completely misused, and someone who's completely misidentified as someone that's a threat to the entire universe when in fact he's not. He does not have control over his feelings, he does not have full control over his power, which is very similar in the previous Broly concepts and even Kale in Dragon Ball Super and in the Dragon Ball Super manga. By the end of this, there is a clear indication that this whole ordeal involving Broly is far from over, in a positive way, but the only question that lingers from there is what happens to Broly. Is Broly going to take this sign of peace offering from Goku in a more approachable way to where one day we could see Broly assist Goku and or Vegeta in a difficult situation? That's what's being painted out and I do believe that for me, I do not want to see a good guy Broly. I in fact want to see a neutral Broly, sort of like Piccolo in the beginning of Dragon Ball Z or Vegeta after the Namek arc when he was there when needed but he was ultimately his own character. I I definitely want to see Broly more involved with Goku and Vegeta, but not more or less having to be there just because he's good, but being there just because he's playing a neutral role and coming to the understanding that there is history between all three of them, but he's simply there just to extend his hand as Goku did while on planet Bampa. Now I am going to do another video featuring members of the community and getting their thoughts as to where they see Broly in the future, and this movie in and of itself is a clear pave way into introducing Broly down the line. Line. Now again, I do want to stress on a few things. Number one, it is not 100% confirmed at this point in time that Broly is indefinitely stronger than Beerus. It is implied that Broly's destructive power could be equal to Beerus, but then again, we haven't seen Beerus demonstrate what he could truly do in Dragon Ball. We can't take the context of Battle of Gods too serious because Beerus at that point in time never fought Goku serious to begin with. He took Super Saiyan God as a joke. Now just imagine what Beerus can truly do if he was pushed beyond his limits over the edge in having to reveal his true power, which is why at this current point in time, time, I personally don't think, and that's subjective, that Broly is stronger than the God of Destruction Beerus, considering that we don't know the extent of what Broly can do other than his growth, and we don't also know what Beerus can do because we never saw any opportunity where Beerus was able to demonstrate his full power, so take that with a grain of salt. In terms of Jiren, that is a similar concept in the fact that we don't know what Broly can truly do now other than him adapting so much and putting down two Super Saiyan Blues, but guess Guess what? Jiren did the exact same thing. Jiren fought Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and Evolution Vegeta alongside 17 and Golden Frieza with complete and utter ease, and that was prior to him even using his full power to begin with, unlike what we saw against Mastered Ultra Instant Goku. So Broly versus Jiren is yet again a 
debatable factor because we don't know to the full extent of what Broly can do and what Jiren can essentially do having to subtract Mastered Ultra Instant Goku from the Tournament of Power. But Broly in this movie, I think, is going to put up a decent fight or a decent valiant effort in having to hold off against Gogeta. And some of the other things that I missed out on my previous video were the references to Cooler or some of the other references in calling back to Dragon Ball Minus. So Cooler is name dropped in this movie, but he's only name dropped as a gag to Frieza because it's referenced that Cooler is in fact Frieza's brother and he was at some point taller, basically poking fun at Frieza for being so short, which is why Frieza's motive here is to basically as a gag, kind of wish to grow to be a little bit taller than how he was before. Not really sure how that works, not really sure how that corresponds with anything, but Frieza does end up surviving in this movie and accordingly enough, it's because Gogeta also saves him during the fight with Broly. And I think that going forward, we need to look at the concepts of fusion. If there was any other fusion that was just about to get the job done, it seems like based on track history alone and when having to look at their own track records, it looks like the only reliable fusion that ever came close enough to actually stopping an enemy was Gogeta. Vegito never beat Buhan, Vegito never defeated Zamasu, Gogeta destroyed Janemba, and Gogeta was just about to destroy Broly before he was saved by the hands of Shile. So that in and of itself just proves that Gogeta's demeanor is more serious than someone like Vegito considering their characteristics and personality factors. So with that, we can only expect to see so much more go down in this movie, including a lot of factors from the Dragon Ball Minus manga, which is canon to the main series, and seeing a callback to what happened in Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, everything having to interconnect together in what potentially is going to lead to a new series, potentially, or movies down the line for us to watch and enjoy. Let me know what you all think down in the comment section below. Are you guys excited for Gogeta? Are you guys in agreement with Goku having to help out Broly at the end of the film? What are your overall thoughts on Paragus having to die by the hands of Frieza and so much more? Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys love anime and Dragon Ball and want to be up to date with Dragon Ball news and information and discussions, then go on ahead and punch that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to stay notified whenever a brand new video is posted. Leave a like down below if you guys are excited, and I'll be catching you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and all his social media platforms. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you can be the first to know every time that he uploads a new video. Oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs>